Hi, I'm Stuart Ward and this is my kettlebell swing tutorial video. Before you do the kettlebell swing, make sure you can deadlift, you can do the goblet squat and the plank uh, effectively and safely. I've got those videos on my YouTube channel, check them out, run through them, make sure you understand them and get good at those movements. Those are the foundation moves and the kettlebell swing is a progression from them. So that's the sort of process you want to be going through. The kettlebell swing is a fantastic all-in-one movement. It's going to burn fat, it's going to develop muscle tone, it's going to work the heart and lungs, it improves posture, and it develops a real athletic movement pattern. It's been shown to have a great carryover effect to help people with running and jumping and so forth. It's a very explosive move. The kettlebell swing is a hip hinge movement, so it's going to be working the back of the body. So why it's so good for posture, it helps to open you out, open the hips, strengthen the underused backside muscles. So it's, um, yeah, it's well worth running through, well worth getting used to. There's so many benefits from it. So first I'm going to show you what the kettlebell swing looks like and I'll show you the build-up exercise as I walk people through to make sure they can do it with as best form as possible. So this is the kettlebell swing. Okay, so as you'll see, the kettlebell swing is a hip, hinge move, a hip hinge movement. So you've got to get the hip hinge right first. So just to remind you, the hip hinge is doing just that, hinging at the hips. And when you hinge with a nice straight spine, you should feel a bite on the back of your legs. That makes you see that you've hinged enough, you haven't bent your knees too much, and your spine is straight. If your spine isn't straight, you won't feel the bite. So practice that and get that right. Once you can, you can do the swing hinge. And that helps you to keep the chest open. It helps you to keep good posture while hinging. So you just take the kettlebell behind you, grab it with both hands, palms facing away. So it opens the chest. And then just practice pushing your backside into the kettlebell, hinging at the hips. Okay, so that's the swing hinge. The next movement I take people through is the hike pass. So we'd stand a, a few feet behind the kettlebell, feet around about shoulder width apart, mainly what feels comfortable, obviously not too wide, but somewhere between hips and shoulder width apart. Hinge at the hips, check you've got a nice straight spine. Your hips should be above your knees, but they should be below your shoulders. Tilt the kettlebell towards you, chest up, draw the shoulders down your back, hike pass and let it go forwards. So you've got this swinging movement from the arms, maintaining your posture. Once you can do that and you can feel the bite in the back of the legs and you can keep your chest up and your midsection braced, you're ready to move on to the dead stop swing. So dead stop have, uh, the dead stop swing adds some more movement into it and it looks like this. So you hike past the kettlebell again, as if it were a rugby ball. So you're stopping between each swing. What I hope you notice when you're doing this is your body's working like a bow and arrow. Loading the body up, firing forwards. It's like you're drawing the bow and letting that arrow go. You're not lifting the kettlebell, you're projecting it forwards. The shoulders stay down and the whole movement's from the hips. Once you can do the dead stop swing, you progress to the full swing. And um, just incorporating all those ideas. Hinge, hips above knees, below shoulders, spine straight, core braced, shoulders down the back. Take a deep breath in, stay tight, hike past the kettlebell, Drive the hips forwards. One of the main common faults I see when people are doing kettlebell swings is they put too much knee bend into it, which changes the focus of the movement from a posterior chain movement to an anterior chain movement. It starts to work the thighs. This is what it looks like when they make that mistake. very different exercise and makes you use the shoulders more and the quads more 
and generally you can't go for quite so long you can't do as many reps I like to work the posterior chain with the swing because that's what our posture requires a modern day posture we're often slouched it's the antidote to the to a modern chair based posture the kettlebell swing and why I use it with so many people Another problem I see with the kettlebell swing is people often flip the bell. So I'll show you what flipping the bell looks like. If you notice the kettlebell's coming up trying to smack me in the backside, it's going to be painful, but also it just deteriorates the form and it changes the projection of the kettlebell. It stops you working the midsection quite so much. It stops the sharpness of the movement. So just think, keep the kettlebell long and I'll demonstrate correctly as best I can okay and hopefully you might hear the breathing it's a good idea to breathe out with a with a hiss like a karate punch or if you're hitting a tennis ball you'll breathe out on the effort the efforts you fire the kettlebell forwards and you're breathing in as the kettlebell falls there's a real kind of yin-yang element to the kettlebell swing. There's the explosive yang element, and there's the draw-in, almost rest period, like the yin period of the exercise. Could see it as interval training, working and resting, working and resting, all in a pendulum-like action. So that's the kettlebell swing. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, just message me on the comments section below, and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks very much.